Hi, everybody. This week, you are going to be looking at enrollment trends in Texas and making some conclusions about that. So one of the things I thought I would do is kind of model how you're looking and interpreting information and data and doing that through the link that I gave you with the national statistics. So um, with the national statistics, I wanted you to come to this page and then work your way down through here, making some determinations about some of the trends that we see uh, nationwide with our kids. Um, so I was just gonna touch on a few of them um, just to kind of give you an idea and then you guys can take it from there and model that same type of analysis with your Texas projections. So one of the things that we can see here is they're always going to tell us what type of data it is and when the year ranges are. With Texas, they always give us a nice 10-year output so we can see over 10 years how things have changed or maybe stayed the same. So what we notice here in the nationwide statistics about um, kids going to be in school is we really see that it's going to stay relatively flat. Um, yes, it goes up slightly, but it's it's relatively flat enrollment. But the really interesting things we see is, and this is, I don't think, any kind of big surprise, is that from 2000 to 2016, we saw a major enrollment increase here in Texas. Um, the interesting part is that over the next 10 to 12 years, we're still going to see some increase, but not the significant increase that we saw in the previous 10 years. Um, here in Texas. So it's kind of interesting too to see where these trends are happening. If we go back up here and, and look at the last 10 years, it's really interesting to note it's been in a lot of these uh, mountain states and then Texas and Florida and Georgia. And, and then you see on the other hand, you know, a, a lot of attrition coming from here um, up in the northern states. So that's one of the things I wanted to point out. The other one that I wanted to go over to was characteristics of our children and youth with disabilities. Um, we are seeing an increase happen over time with kids who are identified under IDEA. Um, what we are seeing over time too, it doesn't represent that here, but we are seeing some shifts and trends in what they're being identified with. Um, over time, since it doesn't say here, I'll go ahead and tell you that we're seeing a little bit of decline here in SLD and we're seeing ASD um, rise a little bit over time as well. Um, what I wanted to point out though, was the information in this section that's not in necessarily in a graph. Um, but when you read through it, it, it tells you some pretty interesting trends that they're seeing. So one of them is they're seeing that overall in students who are identified with learning disability, not learning disabilities, but children who are identified under IDEA are more often males than females. But then we drill down to different types of disabilities. Um, we find that females are higher in percentage in SLD, which are types of learning disabilities like dyslexia, dysgraphia. Um, but males are actually higher in percentages in things like ASD. Um, we also see some trends in races, which is kind of interesting. So we see that um, it's part, this part here is that for SLD, Asian students, two or more races, white students are lower than the overall percentage, but Asian students are higher in ASD than the overall average. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see then where we see these trends and these patterns kind of happen across disabilities, across race, across gender, and all those connections that are there. So those are the two things that I wanted to point out about enrollment trends. Um, and one of the reasons I focus so much on statistics is because statistics tell awesome stories. Um, so we can look at statistics in a vacuum and say, all right, you know, 34% of our kids with um, IDA disability or SLD, um, but we have to look a little deeper and try to interpret what is the story behind that? What do we gain from that? What do we need to learn from that? Um, and that's why I like statistics so much is the interpretation of what what that means, um, maybe what the correlations are, maybe what the causation is. But then what do we do with that story so that we can make our schools better for our kids?